for the most part, not 100%, but in large numbers, their local media as opposed to the national media. And I think maybe it's because they know a guy kind of thing, or I've known this person, or I watched them for 20 years or 15 years, whatever the case may be. So I, I think if you look at national news, you look at, at local news, <clears throat> and the dynamics that are in our country right now, and it's all based on what? Misinformation. Some blogger who's trying to pretend he's a journalist. Some company that has an ax to grind with some other candidates, so they're deliberately flooding the market with bad information. And people are, unfortunately, getting news from the source that tells them what they want to hear. Think about that. I've, I call that ice cream for dinner. Ice cream for dinner is great because it tastes good, but it's really bad for you. you know, we all know we should eat our fruits and vegetables, but nobody wants to do that anymore. Nobody wants to listen to you know, objective news coverage anymore. And, and I think you see, as a result, where we are with that. Um, I'll pause there in terms of my rambling and open it up to questions. I think it's a nice launching point to get into a discussion that Larry had mentioned to me that the guys enjoy discussion, question and answer stuff. I'd be more than happy to, to take those. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, John, this is another thing, but I'm a big watcher of Channel 6. I like you. <laughs> All right, this, this is my guy right here. There's one anyway. Yeah. But why is the sound so bad? Uh -oh. uh, thank you for that question. We switched over our uh, news playback system, and it has been an absolute disaster, in all honesty. Uh, it was supposed to be an upgrade, and it's been one problem after another. And more than just the normal bugs that come with changing technology, but this has been a disaster. You're right, sir. And, and my general manager has gotten so many calls about that. And the uh, engineers work on that all the time. People send me emails, John, I can't hear you. Literally, they say, I can't hear you. And, and I feel like I'm okay, and every, I can hear myself and all this stuff, but what good is that if the viewer can't hear you? That's really bad. Yeah, but we're, we are working on that, but thank you for bringing that up. Oh, it seems like it's been over a month. Well, it's been more than that, actually. It's been off and on for, since February. Yeah, and, and we don't know what the problem is. And the, the vendor who sold us the stuff, he's given us a hard time. It's a nightmare. It really is. It really is, because our whole thing is being able to see and hear us. If you can't see and hear us, you're not going to watch. You'd be like, what the hell is this? And the next, you know? <laughs> this sucks. I'm not going <laughs> to. Yes, sir. Uh, we've noticed that, too. It sounds like your voice is a lot lower. Can you hear it? Or just, you mean lower, like in pitch and tone, or just low and oh, you can't hear it? Yeah, you have to turn the volume way up. Yeah, no. I know, and believe me, I will bring these concerns. I, I, this is not the first time I've heard it. Do you think News Nation is um, more not biased than other stations? News Nation? You mean the Sinclair? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, Sinclair, we, Sinclair is, they're starting a broadcast. They're trying to be Fox News. So, yes, they are biased. Yeah, that's okay. yep. that's their whole thing, is that we're not biased. Well, they say it. You know, it's just like they say Coca-Cola is good for you, too. I mean, it's, no, no, it's a good question. This is what I'm talking about. It's like people are going to MSNBC because they like what they're hearing on MSNBC. They agree with their viewpoints that the people who come on. People go to Fox News because they agree with what the people are saying. And the thing to remember, the majority of people at MSNBC and Fox News are political pundits. They're not journalists. Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson, Rachel Maddow, they're not journalists. They're, they're opinion people. They're like talk radio hosts. Like think Rush Limbaugh. I don't mean necessarily in politics, but just think about that position of talk radio. That's what those people are. And they're telling their people what they want to hear so people will tune in. If they start saying, if Tucker Carlson months ago says, get the vaccine, support Joe Biden, help our country get back on its feet during the pandemic like we might have had in the 40s or 50s because we're a nation and we want to, you know, hey, all of us are in this together. We're all Americans. We're Democrats, Republicans, whatever. He'd be off the, be like, what happened to Tucker Carlson? I'm not watching him anymore, you know. So they were just pandering to, and again, that's where I say the ice cream for dinner kind of thing. And that's the problem, is that people are getting that as trusted information, and it makes me scream off the top of my lungs. And then when they see legitimate newscasts, like with David Muir and Lester Holt and Nora O'Donnell, who are as close to objective as you're going to find, people dismiss it and go, oh, it's fake news. Well, it's not fake news. They're just telling you what you don't want to hear because you're so used to getting what you want to hear, you know, which, is, which is a problem. Yes, sir. Exactly. Well, that's, and I think that's a great question. I think that gets back to what I was saying before about the local media. 
what impacts your life more, what happens on a national level or on a local level. We all like to talk about the national politics, but really, day in and day out, what is happening at City Hall where you live? What is happening at State House where you live, whether it's Mass or Rhode Island or Connecticut? That's what really impacts your life. Think about it. All the laws that are made, all the taxes that are passed, it's almost everything directed to those two areas. And fewer and fewer people are reading the newspaper or watching their newscasts that are local. And again, it's self-serving for me to say it, but we're as close to an objective as you're going to get. Why? Because we're putting the officials on telling you what they're saying. And if you don't believe the news or you don't trust it, if I were you, I would literally go to the source. If you have a vaccine question, if you have a question about a project or whatever, I would go to the source of whatever that is that you're looking for. In this day and age, it's about the vaccines and hesitancy or I firmly believe people are not getting the vaccine, not necessarily for relig religious reasons. I think they're getting it for the most part because they want to screw the country. They want to screw Joe Biden and his presidency so that in the midterm elections and certainly in, in the presidential election, they can say, what a mess the country is. Let's get, it, let's get them out of here. And that's why you hear the president say, it's the worst form of politics there is because now you're putting people's lives at risk. It's always about politics, but this is when people's lives are being put at risk. Didn't he do that? Didn't he set the table during the campaign? What do you mean? When he's going to stamp, I'm going to sh not going to shut down the economy, I'm going to shut down the virus. So Joe Biden played the game too. Right. Now he but, he needs, to but he needs help to shut down the virus. Now, I'm not That's defending true. Joe Biden, but I'm pointing out is that people are deliberately saying, I'm never going to get the vaccine. No, and the, never. I mean, in some days, you know, it's the inconsistencies of the news that drive me personally crazy. But from, from where though? Yeah. I mean, even just from tell me. Even, even from CDC and. and uh, yeah, CDC and uh, FDA. Well, it's an evolving, the other thing too, this is an evolving virus. There's no playbook for this. I understand that. You know, so it's all different. So they're getting the research as they get it to try to the best information at the time. I, I don't disagree with that. But it's just the way it's all presented. And you know what? It, it's, and I don't know when this started, but that's kind of my question. When did news have the so many should, woulds, and coulds instead of is and was? In other words, this could lead to this. There's a hurricane in the Atlantic, and that could hit Atlantic City. Well, because you can't. the football game. It's next month. It's like. Well, again, we'll think about what you just said. It's next month. So you can't say with 100% certainty. No, but why is the news projecting what could happen? Based on the trends of the information they're getting at the time. Yeah, it drives me. I mean, I. Because by the time we announce it, it's already too late. So if we tell you there's a storm coming when it hits, it's too late. So if you prepare for a storm, think about the blizzard. Everybody in this room remembers the blizzard of 78. Everybody knows where you were, where you were stuck, what, what, what happened to the state. Think of the technology back then. I, I, there's one guy, who doesn't it? It was bad. It was, it was snow up to here. The state was shut down. The National Guard was called. Anyway, think about what happened back then. The meteorologists weren't stupid. They didn't have the technology to tell them how bad it was. And by the time they realized how bad it was, it was too late. So it was, think of them forecasting now for that storm. They could have seen that days in the coming, and they'd be like, all right, here's what we got to do. Here's what's coming. I can't, again, you can't say it with 100% certainty because it is, it's nature. And we live in the, by the ocean, which has so much influence on everything. You know what I mean? So that's part of the thing, too. So you can't say with 100% certainty, but you have to give warnings to people. It's like a tornado warning versus a tornado watch. There's a watch because the conditions are right. It could happen. A warning means it is going to happen, but we don't know where, but it's this area, this huge red area we're going to paint. Like this happened a few weeks ago. I don't know if you remember, it was in Portsmouth that got hit. Um, and then on the Cape, actually, you got a, a little, I was at uh, lowest micro, level, microburst. microburst, but it was a little more than that. I think it, it actually EF qualified zero. as, it was an EF zero. And that touched down for, I think it was less than a minute. But anyway, we were in coverage at 1 o'clock in the morning because of that. Because it happened because the conditions were right. Yeah, I, I guess I get weather forecasting, but I don't get news forecasting. Right? This happened today, and that, could, and that could lead to inflation, and that could lead to, it's like, wait a minute, you guys are, well, again, there's always factors, but there's always factors at play, though. It's not ever one just thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's, it's how they choose to present. <laughs> oh, I, I, don't, I don't know what, how to. Yes, I just uh, want to change direction a little bit, uh, ask a little bit about your job. Um, as chief anchor, how much uh, leeway do you have to make decisions as to what might be a lead story, what you might decide is better on the national level, or is that pretty much um, done by other people? It's a great question. Um, 
if I look at the run, especially now with the body of experience that I have, whereas when I first started, I wouldn't even have dreamed of saying anything. But now, just knowing Rhode Island as I do in Southeastern Mass, what do people care about? What's the most important thing? That sort of stuff. If I see something that's really off, I might put my two cents in. But for the most part, I've learned, let people do their jobs unless it's something glaringly bad. If it's a glaringly bad misstep, then I'll say something. Otherwise, I'll just keep my mouth shut. Because for the most part, people don't like to be told what to do. If they ask you your opinion, you give it. But me going over and say, hey, you're 25 years old. You don't know what you're doing. So here's what I would do. You know, they're not going to listen to me. And they're going to be this freaking guy. You know? So I've kind of learned. And, and they, they do ask. I, we, that's one of the good things that's kind of happened at Channel 6, being there as long as I have been. I've really kind of taken on a mentor role for the younger journalists who literally don't know what to do because they don't have the experience yet. They're learning as they go kind of thing. And how do I talk to the governor? What kind of questions should I ask? I say, here's what he's going to say. He's going to tell you what he wants to say, his talking points. And if you just sit there and write it all down and say, thank you, governor, that was great, he's going to laugh all the way until he gets back into his limo and goes to the state house. I said, he's not telling you what you want to hear. He's telling you what he wants you to hear. You've got to ask the follow-up questions. You're representing the person who can't be here to talk to the governor. You know what I mean? So that's the kind of stuff that I really see myself doing. But in terms of story selection, unless it's something way off, like the other day we led with weather, there was no reason to lead with weather. And I even said to Jeff as I tossed to him, which I'm sure went up the ass sideways of the people who were making those decisions, I was like, Jeff, I'm not sure why we're leading with you today because <laughs> it's really nice out. He goes, I don't know either, but it is great. And a few days from now, it's going to be bad. You know? So we had a laugh about it. But I would never have said something like that 10 years ago. I would have been afraid to do that now. But uh, so anyway, yes, that's, that's kind of the role. Yes. How have you survived in 